Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I wanted to show you two pieces of artwork that I did. They're very easy and simple to do and it's a great way to save yourself a bunch of money doing your own artwork and your own art pieces at home. All right, so for the first one, it is kind of a duplicate of a West Elm piece that I did see. I did like the West Elm piece, but it wasn't in the colors that I wanted for my home. And then for the second one, it is something, a technique that I saw on TikTok. So it's real easy and real simple to do. And like I said, they both are great ways to save yourself some money on doing your own artwork at home. So uh, let's get right into it. If you haven't already subscribed, do not forget to subscribe so you can follow along on all the home decor DIYs and other things. And I'm also going to be doing some shopping hauls so that you can follow along and see the good finds that I find. So let's get right into it. All right, here is the West Elm piece that I did see. So you can see that this artwork is real cute, it's real simple, but it's almost a thousand dollars. Just like the pieces from Reservation Hardware, a lot of them priced over a thousand dollars. And I felt like I can recreate it on my own. So I just wanted to make sure I got that texture feel that those high end pieces have. So I picked the canvas that was the size for the end of my hallway that I needed. This one was less than $10. So if you wait till the canvas is on sale or you use one of the coupons, you can get a good deal. I'm going to take some spackle. This spackle goes on like a pinkish purple, but it dries white, which helps you understand when it is dry. I put mine in front of the fan just to help it dry a little bit faster but you can just leave it out and it'll dry it like by a couple of hours you don't want to go too thick and you can see i didn't put it in every spot of the canvas because i just wanted some texture details but not the whole thing covered in spackle so once you're done picking your spots and thinning it out and thickening it up wherever you want it then you're going to put it off to dry and like i said once it dries it'll be white and then you're ready to go on to the next step you can see i still have a pinkish purplish spot there but that's all right because it'll finish drying quick so i have the texture that i want and then i'm just going to go over it with a paint you can pick whatever paint you want i just went over it with one coat you can choose not to paint it but i just wanted everything to have an even color so i went over it and i just painted everything with that one coat like i said to give it an even color and then i went on to the next step for the next step i instead of just coming in with the other color i wanted to outline it with the gold because I have a lot of gold elements in the house. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of like a feathering thing. So I went over an outline of where I wanted the shape to be, and then I'm coming back, and then while it's still a little bit wet, I'm just gonna feather it. So that's why I'm doing it in little sections, like feather it or brush stroke it out. I don't know what you would call it, but yeah, I'm just gonna go. So it looks like everything kind of fades in. So I'm doing it in little sections, going over each one. And then when I'm done with that, then I'll go on to the next step. I didn't do every bit of the outline, just I wanted it in some parts. You can do all around, or you can do just however little, or you can do it not at all if you want. So once I was done with that, and I liked how it looked, then I went on to mixing my colors, because I couldn't find a color that I wanted. I wanted more of a peachy kind of tone, so I mixed a pink and kind of a mustard color together. I didn't mix it completely up because I wanted each color to kind of peek through once I put it on. So I just got them kind of mixed in there. And then I just brushed in and filled in the space of the shapes that I wanted. And you can see with it, you don't have to be neat because it is an abstract type painting. So once I was done with that, then I came back in with the mustard type color and I wanted some of that to show. So I went around the outline and kind of just faded that in to the sections. Once I was done with that, then you can just clean up any spots that I've gotten all over it. And I just went over it with the white and then that is it. It is done and you have your own high end wall decor for like a fraction of the cost. And you can change it and do it how you want. I would have done a reverse canvas with this so it had a frame, but the canvas on the back was too thick. So I might do something else to just give it another little element once I put it at the end of the hallway. But that's it for that one and I hope you enjoyed. All right, so now we can get into the second one. For the second one, this is the one that I saw on TikTok. Um, when they did it on TikTok, they just, you know, put a piece of tape, whichever direction you want to put the piece of tape, and then painted one side of the canvas. I wanted mine to have a more of a rough, like 
abstract feel to go along with the other painting that I did. So instead of using a tape, I'm just going to eyeball it. So first, I'm going to mix up my colors. Again, I'm using the same colors that I used for the first painting. So I'm mixing the pink and the mustard type of color together to get that peachy look. And then once I'm done mixing that, then I'm just going to draw a line straight down the middle or what I perceive to be the middle of the painting just to divide the canvas in half. And then I'll take that same paint mixture and fill in the other side. As I was filling it in, I decided that I wanted to kind of bleed it into the other side. So I just brush stroked along that line just to look, make it look like it was all going over to the other side, if that makes sense. So once I was done with that part, then of course I went around the edges of the canvas just so that everything looks like one and it doesn't just stop with you know the white on this side all right so once i went to the other side i just exposed the pink on that side and then quickly brushed it before it started to dry because i didn't want to cover that whole part with the color but i did go around the edges even though i didn't get the whole front of the canvas i wanted to make sure that the ends had color so once i was done doing that then of course i needed to add the gold element because i like the gold element so i just came back in with my metallic gold paint and i just did a line straight down the middle it doesn't have to be neat it doesn't have to be precise but I just did a line straight down the middle just to give it that little gold element and of course I went over the edges just like I did with the other paint and then once you're done with that and that dries then you can go on to the fun part but the fun part what I did was I went on Pinterest and I picked out two line drawing photos and I printed them out I printed mine out 200% so that they would fill up the whole paper and you can see they're real cute and I love the way they look so you decide where you want to place them if I feel I don't know if you probably could if you are good with doing the line drawing I feel you can just sketch that out with a pencil and then go over it instead of doing it this way but what you do is you'll poke holes so I was poking holes at first with the needle that I was going to be using to do the threading but then it was a little hard to get through the canvas I guess because of the paint the way it dried so I came back in with my seam ripper and I poked the holes but these holes were smaller so then they're harder to see so you decide how you're going to poke your holes so that you'll be able to see them when you're done so you're just going to poke holes like not too far apart but not too close either but just so you can see the outline you're going to make sure you get real good around the details of the face and then once you're done with that you'll take away the paper and you'll begin to thread it through so i i'm using yarn because i wanted it to be thick and i have yarn but you can use embroidery thread and i think with the embroidery thread you'll be able to get a bunch more details i did the other side different but um for this side like i said i just wanted to follow the directions that were on tiktok so i kind of eyeballed how long the line was for the drawing and then doubled it to make sure i had enough yarn so then i threaded my needle i came in from behind and started right at the tip so i pulled the yarn through and tied it off real good so that it didn't come through on the other side with this i'm going to say you don't want to pull too tight when you're threading it through because you don't want to tear the canvas because the canvas is kind of like a paper type fabric so you don't want to tear it all right so i'm using the dots kind of as an outline but not going in and out of every dot that i made so what i'm doing is just going in out and then trying to come in like when i come back up trying to come right next to the original one that i went in on but not too close because if it's too close then if you pull too tight then you'll rip the seam so you can see like i go in and it goes to the back side and then i kind of just look at where the needle is poking when it comes up on the other side if that makes sense to you and then i try to come in like i said not too close but right next to it so i come in and out in and out in and out in and out and then you go around like i said for all the details and then you'll finish it off
and you can see it's kind of close I kept the picture close so that I can see the different details all right so once you're done then you want to finish up the back I just wanted to show you that in the back for some reason I didn't pull the yarn through each time so it's real easy to fix just so you make sure you, you know it doesn't come out later and you have like loose pieces I just kind of loop through with the yarn in the back just to secure those pieces down so that like I said later on they don't come up and I didn't pull too tight because I didn't want to rip anything and then I just tied it in a knot and I was done with that part then I went on to the other side for the other side I did turn around and do it different instead of doing the dots because this one had even closer details I went in with a piece of paper so with the piece of paper with the printed paper and then I just kind of stitched right on top of it so I was able to follow the outline so this one you'll have to tear away the paper once it's done I don't, didn't want to be too rough with it because I didn't want the yarn to tear or anything like that to tear the canvas so I tried to tear it away as gently as possible and that was it but you can see right here where it's still around the outline I thought that was cute and I feel like if you went over that with like some Mod Podge or something that would be a cute element to add to the artwork but I decided to finish taking it off so I can have the look that I was originally going for all right so that was it for those two pieces and like I said they were real easy if you like please give it a big old thumbs up and I will see you in the next video and do not forget to press that subscribe button all right bye